Hello everyone, Kangaroo Coffee here, and Kangaroo Court is now in session. So I have a few tips for everyone, uh, my top 10 tips and tricks for new Stardew Valley players. These are just some good early game tips that I find to be helpful during the very first part of the game. And so uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, starting off with tip number 10, placing a chest right outside the mines. Placing a chest right about here is a great way to have a convenient place to store your items, uh, both things that you might bring with you before you go into the mines. Uh, you can empty your inventory in here so that you have plenty of uh, inventory space when you go into the mines. Uh, also, while you're in the mines, you are probably going to come out with a lot of loot. And so once your inventory is full, you can go over here, dump your inventory uh, into your chest here, and then go back in the mines and get more stuff. Okay, now for tip number nine. So I think most players understand that whenever you chop down a tree, it falls to the opposite side of the side that you are chopping it on. So if we're chopping it on this side like this, it will, sh it will fall that way to the opposite of us. However, this also works whenever you are chopping uh, facing away from the tree or, or toward the tree, I mean, away from yourself or toward yourself and uh, toward the tree this direction. So I hope that makes sense, but you can chop either on the right side or on the left side, and that will determine which way the tree falls. And that's really helpful if you're trying to avoid the wood from falling into water, like it could have done there if the tree had fallen the other direction. So if you chop on the left side of the tree, it falls to the right. If you fall, chop on the right side of the tree, it falls to the left. And that works no matter what side of the tree you're standing on. Okay, now it's time for tip number eight. So a lot of players are surprised to learn, or maybe they just didn't really think about it, but you can place machines inside of buildings. So like we're inside one of my coops right now, and you can see here that there are several mayonnaise machines right here inside the coop. Very convenient and makes it very easy to collect the mayonnaise from them. Uh, you can also put cheese presses in, in barns. Uh, you can put looms inside these buildings. And so that's definitely something I recommend uh, because, you know, along with the auto grabber here and, and stuff like that, it's very helpful to have inside the, the building. It's just, it keeps everything very convenient and close at hand and it doesn't take up room outside. Next on our list at number seven are the spring onions that appear during the very first part of spring uh, during your first year. These are a great source of food and, uh, and also a decent source of money during the early part of the game. Uh, for energy, they give you uh, plus 13 energy, plus 5 health, uh, and they sell for 8 gold for regular quality and uh, 10 and 12 gold for silver and gold quality. But we'll walk back to the farm so you can sort of see where this is, but uh, actually we'll, we'll keep going up from here. And uh, this is just south of Marnie's house. And you just walk south from your, your farm. And then you walk past Marnie's house. And so we're doing the same thing right now, just going the opposite way, of course. Going back up to the farm right now. And there's Marnie's house, you can see there. And now here, here we are back on our farm. The next tip is a fairly straightforward one, and I think one that is often given in these videos, but I think it's one that is definitely worth emphasizing and that is to save at least one of all your items. Now, uh, as you can see here, this is a, a new save. Uh, this is the one that we are using in the Let's Play videos, uh, Let's Play series. And so, you know, we're only on day six in spring of year one. So we're still very early on, don't have that many items, but it's a good idea to keep everything that you get because you never know when you're gonna need a particular item for a quest, uh, for a community center bundle, for a recipe, a gift, uh, even high quality items are, are very useful for the Grange display uh, during the, um, uh, I believe, the fall festival, uh, whatever that, whenever that takes place. And so, uh, those are those are some of the reasons why it's a good idea to keep at least one of every item on hand. And, and honestly, it's a good idea to keep more than one uh, if you can. So, anyway, try to hold back a few items. Don't sell absolutely everything that you get. 
keep some things because you'll want them whenever you get a request from one of the villagers uh, or you discover, you know, a community center bundle that, that requires that item. Uh, and also recipes are something to keep in mind, particularly uh, when you upgrade your house, you're going to want, you know, all the, all the recipe items that you can have. So anyway, be sure to save at least one of each item. Now it's time for tip number five. So there are a few buttons here on the side of your chest here. So what we've done is we've opened up a chest. And so you see here, there are a few buttons. Now, what we're gonna talk about is the add to existing stacks button. This is really helpful because as, it, as the name implies, takes items from your inventory down here and adds them to your chest and just adds them to the existing stacks. So the sap will go with the other sap and uh, we'll take just a couple wood and put them there and then the rest of the wood should go right there. Pine cone will go right there and ta-da! Okay, so that's a very easy way to organize your items and to, uh, to put them away very effectively. If you just want to put them all in the same stacks that, they, uh, that they're already in, then that works extremely well. Uh, the other thing is um, now normally if you're in the process of, of completing the community center, which we will be doing in this save, but unfortunately I have, I have two Stardew Valley saves. One is this one, which is before the community center has opened. And then the other, I have already completed the community, community center. So in either of them, I do not have the button that should appear right here where my mouse cursor is right now. Uh, and I'll put an image of, of that button on the screen right now. I've put it in another video, so if you've already seen that, I apologize. But I just love this feature. But whenever that, button's, but, ugh, whenever that button appears uh, while you're working on the community center, then you just click on it, and it'll show you what you've already completed. Now, note that you cannot actually submit items to bundles from your inventory this way. All you can do is check and see what you've already submitted. So if you've already put in some items, then it'll show you that, but you can't put in new items. I've sat there and stared at the inventory screen for so long being like, why won't it take my item? Because you're not actually in the community center, but you can use it to check. So that's definitely a very helpful thing. Now, uh, moving on to uh, item number six here on our list, tip number six. Uh, again, another chest thing. I find it very helpful to organize chests by color. And so up here is very simple. You just click this and it changes the color of your chest. So now it's red. And, uh, and so you can change it to be any of these colors that you want and probably more. Uh, so I find this to be very helpful if you want to organize your chest by, uh, you know, say green. Sometimes I use for agricultural things and farming supplies, you know, maybe uh, gray for weapons and bombs and things like that and uh, you know, maybe for ores and, and that kind of thing so uh, you know there are a number of different things that you can use uh, a lot of times I'll use blue for like a fishing chest uh, or something like that so you know that's that's very simple and it took me a while to figure out you know that, that that's exactly how you do that all you do is you just you just click up here and and do that at first I was like why do people have different color chests well that's why you just click up here and very easily you can change the color of chests and make them you know, whatever color you like them to be. So I think that looks good. Okay, now it's time for tip number three. Don't ignore your TV. Now today we have the weather report and the fortune teller. The weather report will tell us the weather for tomorrow. Beautiful sunny day. And the fortune teller will tell us our luck for the, for the day. Now, luck is a big deal in the game, and we don't have a lot of it today, but uh, that's something that is a topic for another video. But really what I wanted to talk about right now is the Queen of Sauce. Now, today is a Saturday. The Queen of Sauce is not on, but I'll go ahead and put the days on the screen here that, that the Queen of Sauce plays, and be sure to watch her show every day that she's on, even before you ha actually have a kitchen. So as you can see, we're still in early game in this save. We don't have a kitchen. But I've been trying to make sure I watch the Queen of Sauce every day and the reason every day that she's on. And the reason is that she gives you recipes every time you watch. And when you finally have a kitchen, then you can make all those recipes that you've learned even before you actually had a kitchen. And those recipes can be used for all kinds of things. I mean, gifts and, and buffs and all kinds of good stuff. 
So uh, anyway, uh, you definitely want to do that. And also for game completion, if you're, if you're concerned about that. So, you know, it's definitely a good idea to go ahead and start watching Queen of Sauce from the very beginning. And then that way, you know, later on, you're not stuck, uh, you know, trying to get a certain recipe that, that you can't find uh, from another source. Tip number two, use bombs in the mines. So as you can see here, I have in my inventory eight copper and one coal which is more than I need to make one cherry bomb, which requires four copper and one coal. Cherry bombs are amazing because whenever you're playing in the mines, you want to get rid of as many rocks as possible as quickly as possible. And this does it a lot faster than using your pickaxe. And it will also probably help you get more um, ore more quickly and to reveal ladders more quickly. So I find that uh, bombs are a great thing to use in the game and something that you want to try to start using as early as you can. Thankfully, the, um, the recipe, the crafting recipe for the cherry bomb is given to you as soon as you achieve mining level one. So it's very early on in the game that you get the cherry bomb recipe. And then as time goes on, you'll be able to craft the regular bombs and the mega bombs. And so those are just bigger bombs, as it sounds like. So anyway, uh, I definitely recommend using bombs as much as you can in the mines. It's definitely the way to go. Oh, and by the way, here is a bonus tip. Do not ignore the salmon berries that show up during the early part of the game. So right now we're in spring 17. Uh, this is year seven or something like that for me in this save. But... These salmon berries, if it is your first year and you're in the early game, they are a lifesaver. You can gather up so many of these just walking around the town, and they are good for a, a good bit of energy. I'll go ahead and put that on the screen right now, how much energy they are worth. But they are a great source of food in the, in the early part of the game. So even though they're not worth much in terms of sale value, I think maybe only five gold each or something like that, they are terrific as a food source during a, a point in the game where you really need one. All right, now it is finally time for tip number one, the moment that we've all been waiting for. I think this is one of the most helpful tips I have ever learned in Stardew Valley. It is extremely helpful and is something that I wish I knew early on, but unfortunately I didn't know it for a long time. But if you want to harvest, say, the cheese from all of these machines, then all you have to do is hold down the mouse button and do like that. Just walk along and follow your farmer with the mouse and hold the mouse button down and it'll collect everything. And even better, if you want to pet all your animals, just hold down the mouse button. Oh my goodness. And you want to pick up truffles, do that too. Just hold it down. You don't have to keep clicking the mouse button over and over again. And you will just pick up all the items and you will pet your animals effortlessly. This also works for harvesting crops. Uh, so I just find that to be a really helpful trick. It's simple, but it is really helpful. Okay, one last tip that I would like to bring up before we go is, uh, is something very helpful, something very useful that I really like to do and, and something that I, I didn't know at first when I started playing the game. Uh, something that you can do is you can press tab to change between rows in your inventory. You don't have to go up here and do like this if you really want your salmon berries. You just press tab and you can get to anything you need without having to rearrange things in your inventory manually like that. So anyway, that was something that might be, uh, might be obvious, but that's something that it took me a little bit of time to figure out and something I wanted to make sure that folks were aware of. So anyway, with that, my name is Kangaroo Coffee. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable. Uh, please like and subscribe uh, if so. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Kangaroo Court is now adjourned. Take care.